Welcome to worship here at Lamington Presbyterian Church. We extend a special warm welcome to any visitors with us, both in person and online this morning, and also those who are coming back from being away. We're excited to have many of you in person again after the, the winter season. A couple of announcements to note for you this morning um, regarding mission. We thought we were going to be hosting a family next week through the home um, formerly known as IHN Ministry, but that week actually has been taken by another church, so they didn't need us. Um, so those of you who have donated to that, um, we will save those funds for our next week of hosting, which will be at the end of September. So we will um, give you more information when we get closer to that date. But we are grateful that their ministry is taken care of for the next week. So thank you all for those who are ready to help serve. Um, there are a few opportunities to serve coming up. Um, the first is this weekend in our community garden. On Saturday, we will have another project day, so we'd love for you to come help with the raised beds and get um, ready for the next harvest season. And in the nature of spring cleaning in the garden, we also are grateful that Thomas Larson and his Boy Scout team have been diligently working in our memorial garden. So you'll notice it's, it's um, becoming better kept as we um, are coming into full bloom this season, and we're grateful for his work and service through the Scouts. Um, we're, we're in great preparation for Basket Day. It's coming up in a month, June 5th. Hope you've marked your calendars, and please note there's a list of donations that we are seeking. We'd love for you to participate in that way or let your friends know as well. We're also grateful to have Bess back preparing our bell choir for um, participating in our service next week. So any of you, um, you're welcome to talk to Bess after the service if you missed rehearsal today and want to join in. Um, we're excited that as um, we're getting back together slowly that we get to have these wonderful musical offerings. And I think that's it for announcements. Um, I do want to remind those of you at home to have your communion elements ready. We will serve communion later on in the service. And at this point, I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let us call ourselves to worship responsively. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. We love because he first loved us. Let us worship the God of love. We do things that hold us back from practicing our faith. 
But we worship a God of grace and love who sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. So let us take a look within ourselves to see how we have strayed from his love, that we might celebrate how he will never stray from us. Let us confess together our sin using the prayer of confession. God of mercy and love, we confess that we have failed to trust you as the sustenance of our lives. We have mistreated our brothers and sisters. We have neglected our responsibility to others, and we have forgotten that you are the source of all goodness. Forgive us and restore us to new life, that we would be reattached to your vine and prosper as your people. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent us his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also love one another. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. We love because he first loved us. And in him, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And in joyful celebration of this forgiveness, let us gratefully and humbly share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Almighty God, open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to hear, see, and know your word as we read the words of scripture. Empower us with the wisdom to hear, see, and know what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. Reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, beloved let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he loved us first. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. 
For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Our second lesson of scripture comes from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tending to the earth does not come as naturally to some of us as it does to others. One has to work at tilling the land watch the sun and weather patterns, and endure much trial and error to maintain a wondrous landscape. In that age-old debate of nature versus nurture, I've come to learn, at the regrettable sacrifice of many a dead plant, that having a green thumb is not necessarily a genetic trait. Or to put it another way, perhaps the apple can 
fall far from the tree. My mother is a dedicated gardener, so I grew up in a house with a backyard rose garden and fresh cut flowers on the table all throughout the spring and summer. She spends hours in her yard, fertilizing, mulching, watering, weeding, digging, planting, and pruning. I know many of you do, too. Spend time digging in the dirt and cultivating a garden. We even have a dedicated group of angels who keep up our community garden across the street. If you've ever planted a bush or tree, check to see that the seed is watered properly or painstakingly pruned around budding branches. Then you know what an intimate relationship a gardener or a vine grower has to its vines and branches. Gardens don't just happen. Sure, a lot of creation can bloom and grow without our hand in it, but if we want to avoid overgrowth and plan an organized space, it takes great time and attention. Don't forget about the garden centers and the nurseries. It can take a group of people to source items and tools, to share knowledge, and to put in hours of detailed hands-on work. When Jesus says he is the true vine, God the Father is the vine grower, and we are the branches, he paints a picture of a symbiotic relationship. He is the very source of life spiritual nutrition, substantial well-being. We stem from him. And if we are to grow properly, we must remain in him. In this metaphor, God the Father does the tender job of trimming off certain branches around us. In the Psalms, we hear that the Lord numbers the very hairs on our head. God knows every inch of us especially the parts that we cannot see deep within. As our gardener, God tends even to those places within our soul, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because God knows us. God knows the parts of us that are vital for growth and the parts of us that ought to be cast away. God can spare us the dead weight that prevents us from flourishing, the junk that serves no purpose on the divine vine. Recently, we've been sharing videos with our younger families to help teach the Bible stories that we read and worship. This week's video on John 15 teaches that branches need to stay part of the tree to enjoy being alive. I loved that phrase, enjoying being alive results in the fruit of the Holy Spirit when we produce acts of love and gentleness and faithfulness. These fruits get the gardener's attention in a good way. God sees what needs to be done to help us flourish. The act of pruning makes space on a branch. It allows for more sunlight to get through, more water to be absorbed, and more growth to occur. If our lives are filled with dehydrated branches, then how do we expect to bloom and grow properly? Sometimes we just need a little help identifying those places that are no longer purposeful. We aren't dormant, passive branches. While it's a gift to be attached to the vine, there are things that need to be lopped off in our lives. We try to name those places in our confession, this allows us to appreciate when the sharp, divine pruning shears come to do their work. In worship, before we celebrate the sacraments, we intentionally beg God to prune us in preparation for communion with God. Our time of confession is a time when we say, okay, here's where I think I need a little trimming back. And then we pause in silence hoping that the Spirit will guide us into a self-reflective prayer. We take a look at where we've let the weeds surround us, and we ask God to clean our hearts. 
poet Mary Oliver begins her poem, I Worried, like a confessional. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? It's human for us to worry over such questions. And then here in worship, we remember that we are not the gardener. We rejoice as God gets rid of the dead parts of our lives so that we can let the good parts soak up the sun. When we confess, we, surround our, we surrender our cares to God. And we seek to reconnect to the vine. For after we confess and remember our pardon, then we can gratefully approach the table ready to taste of the fruit of the vine. We are not meant to be individual branches either. We are all part of the same tree, which means that we have to stick together, pun intended, in order to flourish. John describes this beloved Christian community in which we abide in Christ together as one. And this is a choice that we get to make over and over again to intentionally pursue life as one rather than settle for drifting apart into many. Jesus warns his disciples about this temptation. He says gravely, apart from me, you can do nothing. We aren't meant to be on our own. We aren't meant to shy away from the vine grower. To remain on the vine means dependence on Jesus Christ, reliance on God's involvement in our lives, and gratitude for the work that is done for us, the gifts of grace, of love, and new life. This past year, we've been separated from one another in ways that have damaged our souls. We have discovered how globally connected and interdependent we are, even when we have tried to resist what's going on in the world around us. Isolation has made it painstakingly clear that we don't exist for ourselves, nor can we thrive apart from one another. The gift of the sacrament, which unites us at one font and one table, is that when we feel detached, when we fear that we have fallen onto the ground and are withering away, Jesus says, come. He says to us, you are marked as God's beloved children. Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burden, and I will give you rest. This cup is the new covenant. Drink from it, all of you. At the table, he gathers us up and restores us into the one body of Christ, the church. Friends, in light of Easter, basking in the resurrection, we celebrate that someone greater than us can make more out of our collective branches than we can do withering away on our own. We glorify God for loving us, for being intimately invested in our lives, and for offering us what we need to grow. The more we live into this truth together, the more we reconnect ourselves into this community of grace, the more our practice of faith results in a healthy flourishing, thriving body of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. God has given to us freely of the goodness of God's creation. And now is the time when we return a portion of these goods in hope and promise that these resources will serve God's commonwealth in our church, in our community, and in our world. And in this time of offering, we give not only of our financial gifts, but of our hearts as we meditate on the doxology. wisdom to be good stewards of the gifts that you have given us. Take these, our offerings, we pray. Bless and use them to benefit others and to empower our work for justice, peace, and reconciliation in the church and in the world. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from north and south and east and west and sit at table in God's throne. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, it was once he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them that their eyes were opened and they recognized him as the risen Lord. This is the Lord's table. It does not belong to any one church or denomination, but our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast which he has prepared. Will you pray with me? Merciful, powerful, wonderful God, eternally present and graciously close, we are grateful for what you have given us in Jesus Christ, life and love without end. Prompted by your spirit and encouraged by your faithfulness, we lift to you the cares and concerns of our hearts, the burdens and the worries of our lives. We pray that the sick would be healed, that the broken would be mended, that the mournful would be comforted. We pray that those suffering from COVID-19 in our country, in India, and in other places where health systems are overwhelmed, that you would make space for healing and that you would provide peace where there is pain and grief. We pray that the sorrowful would be consoled, that the poor would be lifted up, that the anxious would be released. We pray for children and their growing, for youth and their seeking. We pray for those making new starts and for those nearing a journey's end. We pray for those facing hard choices, and for those enduring painful consequences. We pray for those filled with bitterness and for those who are just empty. We pray that your church might claim its potential, that the body of Christ might be strengthened by its many parts, 
and that the work of ministry might be done with joy and thanksgiving. We pray for the courage to follow Jesus, for the faithful to trust your promises, for the vision to see your kingdom among us even now. Send your spirit to be upon us. Meet us here in this bread and cup, that wherever we are, we would be united as one with Christ in his death, life, death, and resurrection. Nourish us by this meal, that we would be strengthened for your service. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he poured it out for his disciples. And he said, this cup is the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul adds for us that every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, as we have been doing in the pandemic, we will celebrate, those of you who are in person, we will celebrate with individual pods. So you'll notice you take the top flap, you pull the top flap back to release the wafer, and then you pull the second flap back to take the cup. So when you receive your pod, go ahead and take the wafer, the bread, the body of Christ, and then we'll wait until everyone has been served and we will take the cup together.
Will you pray with me? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen. <laughs> ¶¶